Welcome to Know Your Bible. Today we are asking the question, do I have an immortal soul? If I ask this question of almost any minister or clergyman, he will reply yes. If I listen to sermons, I gather the same answer. If I consult religious literature, I am assured that I have a never dying soul. Despite widespread use of the phrase immortal soul, this terminology is found nowhere in the Bible. So where did the idea of an immortal soul originate? The concept of the soul's supposed immortality was first taught in ancient Egypt and Babylon. Quoting from the Jewish Encyclopedia of 1941, we read, The belief that the soul continues in existence after the dissolution of the body is speculation, nowhere expressly taught in Holy Scripture. The belief in the immortality of the soul came to the Jews from contact with Greek thought and chiefly through the philosophy of Plato, who was its principal exponent, who was led to it through Orphic and Eleusinian mysteries in which Babylonian and Egyptian views were strangely blended. Plato, the Greek philosopher and student of Socrates, taught that the body and the immortal soul separated death. The International Standard Bible Encyclopedia comments on ancient Israel's view of the soul. We are influenced always, more or less, by the Greek Platonic idea that the body dies, yet the soul is immortal. Such an idea is utterly contrary to the Israelite consciousness and is nowhere found in the Old Testament. Early Christianity was influenced and corrupted by Greek philosophies as it spread through the Greek and Roman world. By AD 200, the doctrine of the immortality of the soul became a controversy among Christian believers. The Evangelical Dictionary of Theology notes that Origen, an early and influential Catholic theologian, was influenced by Greek thinkers. Speculation about the soul in the sub-apostolic church was heavily influenced by Greek philosophy. This is seen in Origen's acceptance of Plato's doctrine of the pre-existence of the soul as pure mind, or nous, originally, by which reason of its fall from God cooled down to soul, or psyche, when it lost its participation in the divine fire by looking earthward. Secular history reveals that the concept of the immortality of the soul is an ancient belief embraced by many pagan religions. But it is not a biblical teaching and it is not found in either the Old or New Testaments. In our last video, Is Death the End? We showed the biblical definition of death and the hope that lies in the resurrection. The Bible says that the hope of immortality is to be realized by a change of the mortal body if alive when Christ comes, or by a resurrection of that body if in the grave for a similar change. We read in the scripture, He shall change our vile body. This mortal must put on immortality. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. They shall come forth, they that have done good unto the resurrection of life. Clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. How could this be if I were already immortal? And if that immortality resided in an invisible spirit which goes away from my body when I die? The Bible says that the dead are to be judged at the coming of Christ, that the righteous are to be rewarded and the wicked punished at that time. Consider this, he shall judge the living and the dead at his appearing. The Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father, and then shall he reward every man according to his works. We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And when is this? At the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward to thy servants the prophets. Those that know not God shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord. How am I to understand this? If I am to believe that when men die, 
they go to judgment and if accepted into heaven to be rewarded or descend to hell to be punished. What is the meaning of a day of judgment if it is all settled before the day arrive? And finally, how am I to reconcile the teaching of the Bible with the idea that when I die I shall not be dead, but more alive, and no more than I do now? I cannot reconcile the two things, and as one might, must be right and the other wrong, I conclude that the Bible is right and popular teaching wrong, and that therefore I do not have an immortal soul.